Welcome. In this lesson, we'll be looking at how to create table and how to design the table in Excel. Now, before we start, let's create some row above the header. Uh, let's make it two. I'm doing that so that you see whatever I'll be doing clearly. Okay. Now, let's create some row beneath John Benson. And now, let's copy information about John Benson. Let's copy Control plus C and then let's paste it here. Control plus V. I'm doing that so that I'll be able to explain something when we go forward. Okay. Good. Now, let's start with how to create table in Excel. To create table in Excel, let's select the entire data. Okay. So we can be here and then click on Control plus A to select the whole data. Okay. And then let's click on the Insert tab. Now, after clicking on the Insert tab, then we click on Table. When you click on Table, the Create Table box will display. Now, because we've selected our data already, that is why it has written it here for us. A3 to G12. This is G12. This is A3. Okay. If you have not selected the data earlier, you would have clicked on this arrow here to now select it. But it's been selected. Now, look at this box here. My table has headers. Now, what do we mean by headers? These are headers. Employee ID, name, age, department. So, the various title of the information. You see, you have employee ID before writing their ID. Name before writing their name. Age before writing their ages. So, these places are called headers. So, because the headers are part of our selection, we allow these boxes to be checked. If the headers were not part of our selection, we will uncheck the box. Okay. So, say the headers are part of the selection, we will allow the box checked. Then we click OK. As soon as we click on OK, the table will be created. One interesting thing about this is that it creates creator automatically. Look at the drop downs. We did this in the previous tutorial, right? Now, the name of this table is table 1. When you look at the table name here, you see table 1 over there. Another interesting thing about this is that you can rename the table. Because in this sheet 1, you can have multiple tables in sheet 1. Okay, you can have more than one table in sheet 1. So that's why you can rename this particular table. So let's rename this table as, let's say, workers. Start typing the name, then you hit on enter. So to rename this table as what? As workers. Let me click here, and then let me select the table. To select the table, let me click on the first part, then Control plus A. You see that the name displays in the table name box. So that's the new name for it. Initially it was table 1, but I've renamed it to workers. I can also resize this table. To resize the table, I'll just go to resize table at the top here, under the table design tab. Okay. So when I click on resize table, the resize table box will display. Then I'll click here to edit. Now, you see that the table ended at G12. Look at G12 here. This is G12. That's where the table ended, right? Let's say I want it to end at, let's say, G10. I want the table to extend further. So I'll just edit it to G10. G10. Now, for the dollar signs in the A2 and the G13, don't worry about it, okay? When we are looking at referencing, Relative and absolute reference, you know the reason why the dollar signs are there. Okay, just ignore them. So we'll edit it to 13. When I change the 12 to 13 and I click OK, what happens? Let me go down. The table has tempered, I listen that. So that means if you want to enter information about, let's say, a new employee, you have to extend the table so that you can enter the information here. Let me undo it with Control plus Z. Now, assuming we wanted to add extra column rather, maybe for bonus or some, you can still go to the resize table again, and then we select the range. We want to extend it to, that is H, right? So that would be H12, right? So we just change the G here to H. You see that, then we click OK. You see that a new column will be added. So you can click on the header here and edit the name. Let's say it's for bonus or something. So you can edit it. And then enter their various bonuses. Okay. But let's undo that. Let's click on the arrow at the top here. Or use Control plus Z. Okay. 
Now, another method to resize your table is, look at this. Now, look at the ending of the table here. Look at the end. Now, you see, initially, my cursor was a plus, a white plus, right? But when I come to the ending of the table, I can have an arrow. When I left click, hold and drag. Let me drag right where. You see that to create a star color. Have you seen that? I can also drag it down. You can drag it to reach the level you want the table to be. You see that? So that's another way to resize your table. But let me undo this. Control plus Z. Now let's see how to remove duplicate in your data. What do we mean by duplicate? Now when you look at this. EM0001. That's John Benson. Now John Benson's information was repeated twice. Have you seen? So we call it duplicate. Those who do accounting will say error of duplication. You see that. So let's see how to remove duplicate from the table. Now to remove duplicate, let's select any part of the table and then click on Control plus A to select the whole table. So let's click on the table design tab. Look at the table. You see remove duplicates. Have you seen that? Let's click on it. When you click on remove duplicate, it selects all the headers. Have you seen that? So let's click OK. When we click OK, it tells you one duplicate value is found and removed. Takes unique value to name. So let's just click OK. So it's initially I made a John Benson 2. But now it is gone because I used remove duplicate. So that's how to remove duplicate from your data. But let's look at table styles. Okay. Now look at the top here. You see table styles at the top here. Have you seen that? Let's click on the down arrow beside it. You see, there are two down arrows. But let's click on the down, down one, okay? Now, when we click on it, we see several table styles. Let me hover on this one. You see how this comes. When I go to this, look at how it comes. When I go to this, you can hover over each of them to see how it will come. That is the light one. Let's go to the medium one. Look at this. Look at this and that. When I scroll down, I have the dark one. Listen, we have the dark one as well. We have light, medium, and dark. So you can choose any of them. You can even click on new table style to create a new style yourself. So whichever you want to use among them, just click on it. So let me click on this. You see that it's been selected. Good. Now, if you want to convert your table back to range, that is, if you don't want it as a table anymore, you want it normal as it was earlier, you can go to convert to range. Okay, so when I click on convert to range, it says, do you want to convert the table to a normal range? If I click on yes, you see that the drop downs are gone. Let me select the whole data with control plus A. You see that the table design tab is no longer showing because this is no more a table. So that's how to convert your table back to range. Okay, now another way to create a table is select the entire data, control plus A, then you click on Control plus T. You see that the first table box will display. So you just click OK. So the table will be created. So that's another way to create a table. So you can use Control plus T to create a table. OK. So in the next lesson, we look at conditional formatting. Thank you.